So spark up a bowl and tuck yourselves in. Once upon a time is about to begin. This is the Seven Ravens by the Brothers Grimm. <laughs> and going full steam ahead, there's an old man. I don't know if he's old. He's a man. He's a man. And he has a wife. And seven sons. And he really wants a daughter, though. So then his wife gets pregnant again. He's like, oh, I hope it's a daughter. And it is a daughter. Gracie. But, but she's sick. She's, like, weak and she's a puny. Maybe she was, like, premature. She was a preemie. And she wasn't looking too hot, so they were thinking, hey, we got to have a baptism in private yeah. because don't I don't know if she's going to make it. Don't want her to die without being baptized. So he sends his one of his sons to go pick up some water from the spring. He, he sent Jack. Who went down the hill to fetch a pail of water. Damn. All right, listen, your, your sister's <laughs> sick. Yeah. We need you to go get the, the water from the spring. I, Jack, I just need you to go. Julian, stay there, play with your blocks. You fetch the water. You're the old, oldest one. I kind of like you more. Um, and I think you'll do a good job. Mm-hmm. And then he turns his back, and all the other brothers want to join in. So they all join him. And because they all are really eager to be the first to fill up the water to save little sister or baptize little sister. They ended up dropping the Mm -hmm. pail into the spring, and then they just stood there. They're like, I'm not going home. (laughs) Uh, Jack, you f***ed up. Um, It was you, Julian. (laughs) Listen, I don't think we should go home because Dad's going to kick her ass, and our sister is probably going to die. It's going to be our fault. So dad, now at this time, it's been a long time. He's like getting worried because he doesn't want the kid to die before she gets baptized. Mm-hmm. Uh, he gets pissed off and he thinks that they probably are uh, playing stupid games. They got too wrapped up in that and didn't care about their little sister that's hanging on by a thread. And then he damned him. He said, I wish those boys would turn into ravens yep. for some reason. And he does this, and as soon as he says ravens, uh, he hears the the whoosh and the whirring of uh, the wings. Are... So the spring must not be very far away. Maybe they just teleport it. <laughs> 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 and then they're Poof. just there. And the guys are like, up there like, what? <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? Why am I doing this now? Oh, that's dad. Well, he's going to kick her ass. Let's go. <laughs> and then they fly away uh, as far off away as they could. And I guess the dad was sad. That he did that. They couldn't take it back. He didn't understand why it happened. He didn't remember <laughs> like, curse. <laughs> Am I magic? <laughs> How, what are the odds that's going to happen as soon as I say it? Obviously, I did it. I'm going to start my own side show. Uh, she grew up strong and healthy and more beautiful every day. And she didn't know that she had brothers because the parents never told her. But one day, she overhears somebody talking about her. And yeah. they're like, yeah, Gracie's pretty beautiful. But she's the one that caused her brothers to be right. no longer with us, wherever they are. And she goes running to her mom and dad and crying. And she's like, is it true? Do I have brothers? Where are they? What happened to them? And then the parents are like, I guess she's on to us. Yeah, like, we can't lie anymore. We've but listen. tell her the truth. Listen, your brothers disappeared because... God think God Hayes wanted them home. Yeah, and you were just the innocent cause of it. I didn't wish anything. You were the cause. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't me. I didn't say, God, I wish those your brothers were ravens. I, was, I just wish... Uh, I didn't wish anything. I don't have magic powers. <laughs> Did you wish something, Dad? Dad, can you wish for a pony? It destroys her in inside. She's like, I am now responsible for the loss of seven people. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I got it. I have to go get them back. That's a heavy burden. Yep, that too. <laughs> Think about that first. Something I need bad. to save my brothers, whatever it takes. Yeah. Even if I have to cut off my own finger. <laughs> and yes, I will have to cut off my own finger. So she's... She makes it a mission, a point to go and get them, go find them. And so, this little girl, I wonder how old she is. Six. Wow. So, Gracie's like, hey, I'm going to get this little ring. For a keepsake on the journey Mm -hmm. that she was about to go on. And then then a a pitcher pitcher of water water for uh, thirst. thirst. And then a loaf of bread, so if she gets hungry. 
and then also a chair, you know, if she wants to sit down. So now she's on her journey, and she's just going balls to the wall, to the ends of the earth, all the way out to the sun. Uh, I don't know who this kid is. She definitely had a magical dad if she's going into space to the sun. And this kid is tripping on acid for sure. Carrying a bunch of sh- to the sun, but the sun is... It's got a hot temper. Yeah, he doesn't want any kids around. So she bails and she goes to the, moon. to the moon. But the moon's super cold. Yeah. And he's very malicious too. And, and he says... I smell flesh. <laughs> oh, that's <sighs> creepy. It's been a long time since I ate a human. Especially this six-year-old kid has got a pitcher of water. Look, that's uh, take care of my thirst. And some too. bread. <laughs> and some bread. And a ring. And a chair. Well, I don't know what I'd do with a chair, but... I get but, two you picks. Know, we don't find out what, what happened. So <laughs> she she takes off, so it doesn't even matter what happened. The moon's like, well, <laughs> I don't smell it anymore, so I'm going to go back to sleep or something, whatever the moon does. <laughs> so she goes to the stars, and they're so nice there, and they invite her in, and they're so friendly, and they all have their own chair. And she, she was like, hey, I got one, too. And she, she hung out and was like, I could be a star, too. So then she's a star hanging out. And then the morning star rose, get, got, like, up next to her and was like, hey, uh, if thou doesn't hast not with to take this chicken breast, I don't know. You will not open the door. Or... Yeah. Yeah. Take this and you can open the door. Yeah. He's like, hey, <laughs> check it out. This is a chicken. This is a drumstick of chicken. Uh, th- this is a star again. Stars just have drumsticks of chicken. Stars eat chicken. He's like, hey, here's a chicken drumstick. This will open up the glass mountain door. That's right. There will be your brothers, uh, the seven ravens. Here you go. Take this. And a little girl. Wraps it up. She's like, oh, okay, yeah, I Here. remember, I passed that place, I didn't think to knock. <laughs> <laughs> I could have just knocked. <laughs> anyway, she went to the sun, then to the moon, then to the stars, and now she has to go to this glass mountain with a drumstick, a chicken drumstick that she's wrapped up in a in a cloth. She goes to the glass mountain because she knows where it's at, has the drumsticks like, hey, I'm going to take this out, and open the door somehow. She opens up the cloth. And it's and- gone. She lost the morning star's gift. What is she going to do now? Cut her finger off. <laughs> Obvious next step, Cause right? Because she just knew that would work. <laughs> she cuts her little finger off and she puts it in the door and <clears throat> succeeds in opening the door to the glass mountain. Because I guess she was like, okay, a drumstick looks, maybe it's like my finger. And then when she gets inside this glass mountain, she meets a little dwarf, Larry. Larry's like, hey, hey kid, what are you looking for? What are you doing here? Do you think people just open up my door and can just waltz right in here? (laughs) Yeah, I cut my pinky off. (laughs) Oh, okay. Well, I guess drastic measures. Uh, (laughs) And Gracie Gracie says, I'm looking for my brothers, the seven ravens. Dwarf's like, yeah, your brothers are are, uh, not here right now. But if you just want to wait. Come on in. So he goes and he finishes, he's setting up the table for the seven ravens, putting out all their plates and their little glasses. For dinner. Uh, she is doing the Goldilocks thing and yep. taking a bite f- uh, from each plate and taking a sip out of each glass. And But on the seventh glass, she ha- remember that little ring? She dropped it in there. And then she heard a whirring of the wings flap above her and she got scared and she hid. And the dwarf, little dwarf was like, oh, yes. Oh, yeah, <laughs> They're flying home. And they want to eat, so they go to the table. And they're looking at their place settings, and they're like, one after the other, they're like, hey, yeah. who's me, who ate my, who's eating my drink? Who drank my stuff? Who's <laughs> eating, who's getting all up in my sh-? And then the seventh one takes, is drinking his glass, and, and the ring pops him in the nose. He's like, this is mom and dad's ring. If our sister's here, then we can be saved. And then the little girl's like, oh my God, I'm here. (laughs) This is my chance. She comes out. And And they turn it back into their normal selves. And they're all happy. And they celebrate. And they hug. And and they kiss. kiss, And they go home. 
and li- and live happily ever after. Yeah. Except for she's still missing a finger. She grows it back. <laughs> like she's like, Dad, please wish it back on. <laughs> <laughs> I brought the brothers back. Oh, that's funny. So yeah, that was the end. I I don't know if she, you gathered yeah. that. They lived happily ever after. The end.